Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever, first ever, first ever. Open up and tell it all. Yes. I'm your host, Box Dollar Bill. Yes, the boss is boss is boss. Today we're having our first episode ever known to mankind. Yes, the number one podcast. Open up and tell it all. And my first guest, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome. Help me welcome Dexter Shabalala, a.k.a. Jeremy Smith. What up, bro? Nice to be here. Nice to be here. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, brother, welcome. Welcome to this uh, wonderful and first episode. I don't know how I feel about this, man. Yeah. See what I told you? Now I'm getting calls. <laughs> What's up, bro? I'm doing a okay on my side of the world. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now let's get directly into it, man. Anyways, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Dr. Shabalala Jazzy Smith, but I'll be talking to him about various things and mostly about him. And yeah, man, are you ready to actually open up and tell it all? Yes, indeed. I am open up and I'm willing to tell it all. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, let's start with the first question. Who is Jazzy Smith, man? For those who don't know uh, Jazzy Smith, who is Jazzy Smith? Can you tell everybody listening right now? Okay, so for the viewers at large, um, Jazzy Smith is going to be 30 years in November 14th, 1992, which is my date of birth. Okay, right. wait, hold uh, on. <laughs> I like how you didn't start by saying uh, Jazzy Smith is born 1990. You just go, Jazzy Smith is 30 years old. You know what they say about turning 30? About the fall of the calendar? No, no, I don't know about that. The calendar and all of that. All I know is that apparently when you're 10, 30, you have your one foot in the grave. <laughs> I thought life begins at 40, but leave that alone. No, no, I'm not talking about life. I'm talking about your foot being in the grave. But yeah, man, you were still telling everybody right now, uh, who's Jesse Smith, man? He say you're turning 30, born when? Uh, 1992, November. November 14, 1992. All right, all right, all right. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Okay, I am visually impaired. I only see in my right eye. Don't see anything in the left. Mm. I am from the beautiful island of St. Lucia. Right. 238 square miles. Um, it's, it's located in a group of islands called the Caribbean. Right. Between the two continents of North and South America. So this is my geographic location. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, bro, tell me, sure man. I don't know where to start because when I look at the stuff that you have actually done and the things that you know, but there's quite a lot. There's just quite a lot that you have, I've, I've read up on you and uh, your bio looks very incredible. But let, let's start here, man. Let's start here. So um, you're currently, uh, what you call the MD of uh, Solid Head uh, Universe, correct? Correct is right. Correct is right. I'm the MD of Solid Universe. Um, it's a company where we do everything entertainment, mm. whether it be music, radio, drama, and my brother, we have not even begin to comment as to the amount of things that we can put under this entertainment company. All right. All right. But anyways, uh, you're an MD of, uh, of a company and I uh, understand that also Jesus Smith uh, is an expert or has is a uh, information on astrology is that correct? Also correct as well. I have been dabbling in the pesquito science, as you would call it, but to me, I don't see that for science. No, you I got see it as science. All right. What did you call it? Pesquito science. Pesquito um, science. Scientifically call it by science. Pesquito means false. Okay. Okay. All right. So you do astrology. Man, tell me a little bit of astrology, man. Tell me something about astrology. Uh, astrology is basically the study of the understanding of the heavens, um, the position of the planets vis-a-vis -vis the stars and the constellations. Mm. When you have an understanding of the planet movements, 
the stars and what constellation they are in, you are able to make a rough prediction as to what might or might not happen based on those events. But now tell me, who came up with that? Uh, you know, honestly, listen, bro, I'm going to be real with you, number Frank. The, the truth of the matter is, man, I don't believe in no astrology at all. I don't. But the, the, the thing appears to be always correct, man. Or is it too random that when you just read it, then it, it, it aligns? It's like... I'm, I'm well, making, I, go ahead. Well, what I always say, my brother, you know, astrology can go way right back to the Egyptians and even before then, you know, mm. it is not something that it is new. It's something that has been there um, to a point where when leaders of the various countries used to make decisions, certain and astrologies was a, good, was a must have in your toolkit. Wow. So, uh, wh so why did all of that change though? Because um, the people at the time um, realized the importance of having an understanding of what may happen so you can prepare yourself for the possibilities. I like you that. Know, but, you know, you, you remember, we call it a plan A, plan B, plan C kind of thing. So. But now why kids are learning about uh, 2 plus 2 and 10 plus 10 without learning astrology? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about much money, but I guess, you know, we all have to start somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, because this is what I'm saying. If it's that real and it's that important, I think then people should actually know about it, which is uh, people like yourself, which are very uh, important in society. Uh, that you need such platforms where you're going to be able to share such information and the people can actually learn from it. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, very true. Very true. yeah. So, but from your own experience, I understand that since you actually... Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know whether I should say believe in it, but you're you're you're, you're a researcher of such stuff. Um, so has it been accurate for you? Um, for me, um, during my studies or my research, it's pretty much accurate. It's not hundred percent accurate, but it's mm. it's pretty much there. It's on the money. All right, then moving along, man, moving along. I don't want the show to actually now be open up and, and tell us about astrology. <laughs> We're telling it all. We're telling it all, bro. So, yeah, man, let's talk about other stuff that you get up to, man. I understand that you also work in a church. Yes, I do work in a church. That's my paying job for now. All right, okay. And how, how well does it pay? Mm, if I have to convert it into no, no, yes, don't tell us the amount. No, don't tell us the amount. But I'm saying, does it pay well? Would you encourage your child to go and work in a church? <laughs> well, um, for starters, yes. Yeah, if you just leave it when you're looking for a job, yeah, why not? It is. Oh, okay. It's more than just the pay. It's, you know, getting work experience. You know, as you see. You need experience to get a job, but you're going to get a job without experience. What is that like? Okay, all right, I feel you. Yeah, so let, let's go a little bit uh, deeper about the uh, conversation because I'm looking at a uh, majority of the stuff uh, that you get up to and the, and the stuff that uh, I've, I've actually seen. They're very much uh, holistic, if I can put it in that context. Because I understand that you're also yeah. the CEO of Alex Info Hub. Oh, so I'm also the CEO of Alo Alex Info Hub, yes, where sir. we focus on everything journalism and holistic um, development approach. Yeah, it's always holistic and and uh, and and uh, and spiritual. And I look at the other stuff that you participate in and, and all of that. So, is there a specific reason why you are so much inclined in holistic development and empowerment? Well, for me, um, you know, my, my interest in holistic is basically to create, to understand the balance between the mind, the body, and the spirit. All three are important, mm. and they all need to be in balance with one another. If one is in balance, um, as we would see, there's a this is, mm. or this is, <laughs> right? right? And 
bodies are going to function. Okay, all right. Now that that I get, let me ask you this: Do you drink? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> So what when you drink? Okay, let's get it. Do you also smoke? No, I don't smoke um, cigarettes, but I do consume marijuana. All right, uh, Leon Germany you heard it. He says he doesn't smoke; he consumes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. He consumes marijuana. All right. When people have um, about marijuana, they only think about the smoking aspect of it. But you know, you can put, you can make oil out of it and put it in your food, and you know all the other stuff. Yeah. 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 You don't need to inhale smoke if you don't want to. All right. So yeah, man. I, I don't know. For me personally. Yeah, I've actually done weed, but not, not necessarily. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a weed person. I was never even a weed person. It's just like when people are doing it, like, yeah, man. Like, pause me, go check out the puff, and like, it'll, it'll go high and all that. But anyways, uh, the, this interview is not necessarily about me. So it's about you. Man. So tell me, and looking at the society right now and everything that's happening, are we, would you say we are aligned with, with, our, with ourselves? Looking at the community and the, the world at large. And notice this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually having this interview I'm from South Africa. Um, yeah, so he's in St. Lucia. So uh, that's the question that we have right now. If I also look at state of affairs, mm. um, I would say that we human being, the alignment has shifted quite a bit. Okay. It's not where it used to be in before. Before our parents and even going back to our grandparents, I think they they live a more holistic approach and you know, in terms of using what they got to make it, you know, work for them. Mm. I think right now we forget the old practices and we have shifted away from the alignment. You know, we have shifted away from the alignment. Our Man. grandparents used to be in more agriculture, so they used to grow some of their foods that they eat, you know, no mm. fertilizers, no pesticides, nothing like that. Right now, we are more into the market oriented. We go to our, the supermarket to get our foods and produce. And even though it's, you know, we are in the fast generation, fast food is the norm now. So. Correct. So yeah, so because of that, you think we've disaligned? Because the on, the honest truth is that uh, when you look at the the society, the truth of the matter is uh, we're living in a society with more problems than uh, what our forefathers have, according to history. That is, um, we're dealing with a whole lot of diseases now. We're dealing with uh, a whole lot of uh, people just behaving outside the the humane way of of, of actually le- behaving or living. Yeah. Mm. So, what would be your thoughts in that regard? In terms of bringing it back to alignment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, um, if we want to bring our being into alignment, we need to we need to get overhaul. I think we now need to return back to the basic. We need to mm. start consuming what they grow in terms of food because they always say you are what you eat you know mm. so if you eat healthy the body the more likely going to be healthy it's just like a car my brother you we all know about the car and some diesel or oil right yeah so if you remove the diesel remove the oil and you put it in water it ain't going to go anywhere it wasn't made to consume water all right the same thing with the body okay now, can you tell us? Yeah, while we still, yeah, while we still in that, yeah, I'm saying while we, come on, bro, give me a chance. I'm saying, I'm saying, talking about alignment. Tell me, so what has been the alignment between you, Mary G, and Ginger? <laughs> To be honest, if you're my brother, it's a, not an alignment, but a disalignment. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, tell us about that. 
let's just say blah 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 um the relationship have gone to hell for the sins uh a lot has gone to hell so what are you talking about man what are you talking about let we let's talk about is it uh what are you referring about are you referring let's play this game my brother mary chian ginger or as i would call it my dodo they don't see eye to eye and because of okay wait hold on they don't see eye to eye yeah they don't see eye to eye what happened uh, what I heard Let's is that you happened, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Well, I wasn't the, I wasn't the happy day. Let's just say my brother, we were on a UBC um, call, my brother. I right. used to meet once a week, you know, just to chit-chat and, you know, relax, you know, just to have fun. Uh-huh. And let's just say my brother, you know, in the heat of the conversation, Right. You know, some stuff was said and it wasn't taken nicely in terms of, you know, people's geographic location and so forth. Oh, oh, right. Uh, so because... Okay, uh, I understand that uh, Mary G and Jinja are not in the same geographic location, right? Yeah, not in the same geographic location. But now, really now, bro, let, let's not F with each other. So was it really a location uh, cause... Of of the, the disalignment. <laughs> well, that's where it began, my brother. That's where it began. Oh, 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 is that where it began, or it's where they decided they'd like to begin? But the beginning <laughs> yeah. was there before. <laughs> where where did they decide where to begin, or where it began? The point they decided there. <laughs> but no, bro. No, let's be real, bro. Because the word out there is that. Uh, there was some sort of relations, or there was a belief of relations with both of them. Uh, yeah, code on code. Um, to my understanding, to my understanding, there was only a belief in relationship with my dodo. As for me, we were friends. We were friends. Okay, okay, all right, okay. I don't uh, know if he had any ideas, but as far as I know, we were friends. <laughs> Yo, big shout out. <laughs> Okay, shout out to the ideas, man. Because you know what? A lot of people have ideas, man. We all have ideas, man. I have an idea that I have right now, man, of someone, but I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, tell us, man, a little bit more um, about uh, now that we are moving off of the. Uh, the the whole thing about marriage i just thought we should take that turn but now let's, let's go back to this man we live uh in a world right which is very much improved and um it's uh, a lot of information is out there and all of that and people have access to information which is so so great and uh you know we are very much exposed than our previous generations and uh, you actually mentioned this at the beginning of the interview that uh, uh you have visual impairment um, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? Can you tell us a little bit more about visual impairment and uh, how it is uh, in, in, in the south of St. Lucia, uh, that's the Caribbean islands? Is it the same globally? Do you think the challenges of people who are living with dis uh, disability or living with visual impairment the same everywhere? Okay, in terms of, um, yeah, we are a bit more advanced um, in terms of where we are now. Yeah. And I believe mean, because of this advancement, you know, mm. for people like us who are living with um, different disabilities, you yeah. know, we are more able to function in the wider world, right? In terms right. of communication, moving, and so forth, right? Mm. But even with that, I think, you know, we still have a long way to go because technology can only do so much, mm. right? So, yeah, but I'm still trying to understand what are the challenges that you think as a visually impaired you face in, in St. Lucia? Would you think it's the same challenges that everyone with a visual impairment globally faces? Um. There might be um, some unique um, challenges um, right. depending on geographic um, region, but mm. generally I think we all face the same challenges. Mm. But how, how, the same okay, challenges. although I, I don't get the you know I don't get the the depth uh, standpoint 
from you, where do you really stand in terms of what are the challenges and how they can really be, uh, almost say challenge them back, but uh, how can we eradicate them? But I'm more leaning into okay. the direction. No, okay, no. Before we go there, let me just, let me just expand a little bit more. For example, yeah. I think no matter where you are in the, in the world, I mm. think access to jobs Oh. It's, a, it's a problem that all blind and vision mm. people face. Mm, mm, mm. You know, some countries are better at it because of policies and so forth, but I think all countries which are blind and vision get it. That and job. that's why I freaking started my own company! Yes! Yeah. I'm not gonna wait for no government to sort me out, sort myself out. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, you see, that's the way to go. Yeah. So yeah, you tell me now. So what do you think? Do do you think that uh, that's the way to go for everybody though? Like living with uh, some form of disability, we should then uh, start our own companies. Is that what you think? Um, for those who have the willpower to, it's a it's a must have. Although I will expand it and say whether you have disability or not, I believe everybody should have a side hustle. Because you know, it's my, my my take. Oh, my thoughts would be no. Let's let's create a network. Let's create a board, a, a body, or a web where we all connect. You know, people with disability and people in communities. Let's let's learn. We come with all different types of uh, skill sets. Let's trade with each other. Let's uplift each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's do that. Yeah. If if then you start a shop, I account for you, and then uh, and 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 somebody else can actually. Wh- what else can we do? can can uh, record stuff for you or place orders for you so the thing is we have to be strategic well if you then you would have asked me i'd actually say that let's create the web let's create a, a network whereby we can all uh learn how to trade with each other that we can build each other from there because clearly there's no like you say it's a universal it's more like it's a global thing it's a, it's a global uh, phenomenal, a global uh, yeah. predicament that uh, every person living with disability, they struggle getting jobs. So why do you even try to get jobs? Why do you even try to, to do that? Instead of, you know what, you just accept your odds and say, these are my odds and this is what I'm going to do with them. You know, you, you, you understand that, okay, uh, my life in the next 10 years, if I don't do anything about it, the government is not going to do anything about it. What's your thoughts on that? I'm correct. Um, I, I do believe that, you know, we, I could, I'll say this, um, we as blind and vision impaired people, I see we have been our greatest entrance. Mm. You know, it's so we advance each other. We have right. been chained down each other. Mm. So if we work more hand in hand and we assist each other's shortfalls, mm. we could have a blind economy. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Where it's an economy, you know, run and operated by people who are blind and visually impaired people. Exactly. Can you imagine this, bro? I don't know how this would happen. We do a virtual bank of some sort. I don't know how that works and what are, what are the technicalities of that actually happening. Having an, an, an online bank, we know that they are there already. And then we yeah. do some sort of crowdfunding. Or we all pay to that to, to create a system that enables opportunities and gives people job to work wherever they are. Because another thing to a person living with visual impairment, understand that uh, mobility and movement is a very huge concern. And I think we can shout all we want to and we can protest all we want, march all we want to. Uh, I don't I don't. I don't see anybody who see seeing the problems of a person who cannot see <laughs> I don't you see how they're gonna work out. Yeah, because again mobility is another issue that, that yeah. you know is faced by the community and you know if you don't you know have it, your own taxi or a family member who can drive you from point A to point B when, hey, you are the mercy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, no, let's, let's, let, let's move on. Let's move on, brother. I think uh, we've really expounded on this enough, so I think we can actually move on on other things. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you right now. Okay? So I want to ask you, so what's the one dream or the one thing you always have in your mind 
as you believe is your life's purpose? For me, um, my dream or my purpose, as I would yeah, you call it, is not something in the science field. And I think that has been my calling. Yeah, no, can you, can you repeat I that have, for me? Can you repeat that for me? I said my calling, my dream has always been to do something in the sciences. Oh, to so do something in the science. Yeah, All right. That's where I'm being gravitated towards and being pulled towards. Is there a reason why uh, you gra you're, you're gravitating towards the uh, uh, science? You know, from young, I've always been that person who has been interested in how things work. It's towards Discovery Channel. <laughs> you know, Natural Geographic too. Uh, my interest in the sciences began from you know, when I was young, and I used to do a lot of stuff with arts and crafts with you know, my hands. So I think you know, me being in the sciences would allow all those options to you know be at my disposal in terms of the knowledge, being creative, mm. and even traveling the world, which is something I want to do. All right. So, uh, in all the there's this different type of sciences, the science. So, which which one do you uh, really find uh, your passion lies in, or passion lies? Um, for me, it's earth sciences. Earth sciences. So, what do you think has been the greatest discovery? Technology, and all the other sciences. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think has been the greatest uh, discovery? In, in, in science, what's the greatest success of science according to you? What has been the greatest discovery? Yeah. Oh. To be honest, I think there are many discoveries. All right, like, but if it's you have to just main, name at least two or three or even one, because I'm just looking for one, which one do you think this is? Wow, the, the, this was a success. I think one of the greatest successes is um, peninsulin. Um, the what? That's what I think. Okay. That's the treating, treating um, various diseases. Yeah, the penicillin. Yeah, penicillin. Okay. Penicillin has one of, has one of, one of the greatest discoveries. <laughs> I thought you were talking about genitalia. <laughs> Anyways, majestic love. <laughs> yeah. Oh my bro, I was going below the waist, my bro. Yeah, I, I thought that you were going below the waist. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, my bro, no, my bro. We are still above the table. We still have above the table. Everything is on the table. Don't worry. All right. Okay. It's it's cool. Do you see yourself actually um, getting married one day? Yes, I do see myself. Been happily married with a few kids. Okay, all right, that's cool. Uh, but do you mind if I ask you, do you see yourself divorcing? <laughs> how many? How many? Nobody, nobody sees themselves doing that. But how many are doing that? <laughs> well, as somebody said once, you know, the leading cause of mar the leading the leading cause of divorce is marriage. So if you don't want to get married, you if you don't want to get divorced, don't get married. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a stats on that. I know the tremendous statistics. So what would be the stats? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the stats on this is my brother, you know, Christian marriage have a 40% chance of being. <laughs> right. Second chance, second time marriage, 60% chance of being. <laughs> First time marriage, it's no longer the marriage, it's you that have the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And people uh, usually wouldn't admit that it's them. It's, they'll always blame the other person. But anyways, man, uh, as we, con uh, as we uh, continue, I just want to hear from you, bro, that uh, tell me, uh, I know that you have so much love for Africa and um, you have so much, so much, so much love also for South Africa. And I guess that's how I'll know you. And... Um, yeah, man. Can you do, can you tell me a little bit more of Africa? Well, what drives or what inspires your love uh, for for Africa? 
and what would you want Africans to know? I know there's going to be Africans who are watching this, listening to this. So what is it that you'd want them to know? And what is it that you love? What's so special about Africa, according to you? Let's, let's start there. My love for Africa is uh, the tree that has been rooted into this into the soil. You know, without the roots being rooted into the soil, the tree cannot get any nutrients. So for me, as a being, right, right. my descendants, my ancestors, philosophy, the way of thinking. Yeah. But here's the thing is that I, I realize that international people have so much love, especially uh, our African-Americans and uh, African uh, black people out there. They have so much love for Africa. But yet uh, Africans, people who are in Africa, are trying to run away from Africa. It's almost like everybody in Africa doesn't want to be in Africa. Okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I might get cyber attacks. And like, who said we don't want to be in Africa? I'm not talking about you, mother. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you know what, my brother? Sometimes there's a say that's that good. You never miss, you know, the water until the well runs dry. Yeah. So I think for Africans who are in Africa, they don't appreciate what they have until they have left this. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So if, 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 I, if I could have given that advice, yeah. everybody to relocate out of Africa to understand the purpose of Africa and then go back to Africa. But hey, yeah. good advice. Man, I like what you use the, the word purpose. So the purpose of Africa. So Africa actually has a purpose. Yeah, it has a purpose, my mm. brother. So what would be that purpose? Do you think we have discovered that? Have we made that success yet? To be honest, my brother, we have not lived up to that purpose. My goodness. Yeah. And we haven't. Yeah. And I think we we are too busy um, letting other nations, you know, define our purpose for us. Mm. Instead of we embracing mm. what we were meant to do. Mm. Yeah, because you know what? I mean, history tells us, and that history is keep on repeating itself, that other uh, nations are coming into Africa and uh, 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 wanting to rule Africa. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't want to get into the subject of the, the natural resources and the minerals. We, we all know that story. We, we, we all know that story. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing, like, um, I know it's also one of your songs. It's one of your favorite songs. Um, it's, it's a redemption song. Correct, it's right. Bye, bye. Yourself from slavery. Okay, we, we know that you're not a singer, bro. Yeah, so leave that to Bob Marley. But anyways, I know that is one of you. Yes, shout out, shout out to Bob Marley. He gave us some amazing music right there, and uh, for his contribution in 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 the whole global at large. You know, um, you can learn quite a lot from that very song. Because when I was thinking about the fact that I'm going to be interviewing you, and I started listening to the song, and I thought about what it actually says: uh, the freedom of the mind, the emancipation of the soul of your emotions and your thinking it's, it's very very critical do you, do you get what i'm saying and i, I understand that yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. so strong about that yeah yeah you so see, yeah we need we need to we need to um like i like i said earlier you know we as you know people i think we are our greatest enemy we have talked about the um, blind and visual impaired um, community, but mm. we as Africans, we are the greatest disadvantage to ourselves. When you look at the other races, the white, the Indians, the Chinese, mm. the Europeans, you know, whatever, there is a sense of unity amongst themselves. They, they, they work for common purpose, mm. right? Mm. But we as Africans, we do not work for common purpose. And because we don't work as a, as a common purpose, we are often raped, let's put it that way. All right. But now let me ask you this. What do you think could be the cause of that? What causes, what has caused this division? What has caused uh, this um, 
what you call this, the separations amongst uh, or s hatred within the community of, of, of the African people or black people. What do you think? Because now you say that we are our greatest disadvantage. That's what you said, right? That's your words. I'm calling. Yeah. So I'm saying, so don't you think it's some Eurocentric system that has caused the self-hatred, that has caused this division amongst us as Africans? What, what would you say about that? Or do you think we just naturally have that? We have this thing of don't want to say? No, no, no. No, it doesn't mean that we naturally have it. It's something that we adopted. And we adopted that when slavery was the thing. Yeah. <laughs> that you know, I was actually... Because of we being colonized, yes. we adopted practices that were not in alignment, we marked the alignment again with the African tradition, the African way of, of, of work, of doing things. All right, because you know what, I was actually uh, reading up on uh, brainwashing. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> I'll tell you why, anyways. <laughs> Uh, because you know, uh, there's a whole lot of things. I, 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 to be a magician, okay? No problem. Say again. Do no, 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 no. I don't want to be a magician. I just don't want anyone doing magic on me. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what, what, I, what I actually then learned from the, the. Um, the the research that I was actually doing because there's many things which and and propaganda which is out there. And I don't want to be misled. I want to know that right now uh, I'm, I'm being brainwashed. So I started doing some studies and, and research on that. And you'll be surprised at what I actually learned and what I actually found out. So what I did then uh, discover these three steps to actually brainwashing a person or a human being. So the first, uh, the first step is attacking or uh, making them hate the, the their identity. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the first right, step. Right. So you you start you make them question themselves. You question their their value. They, they they question themselves. Once they question their own identity, that's the first step. Once you've gotten there, you you then take the following step, which uh, the following step would be um uh now giving themselves offering them salvation. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> what does it sound familiar to? <laughs> but anyways, so a step number two would be then offering them salvation. Give them a new name. Give them a cause. Tell them, no, you, it's not that you were bad. It was not your fault. It's just that you didn't know that you are actually this. So now you give them a new identity. Right? And then step number three, you introduce them into a world with systems that divides them with, with everything they need. You make them hate uh, either their family or their, their jobs or whatever they, whatever they are. You just give them a new life system and you have actually brainwashed somebody. So, anyways, back to what we're actually talking about. So, I'll actually ask you, don't, don't you think that uh, that's what happened to the African child? That's what happened to the African people, that uh, Africans were actually uh, brainwashed. And they, they took the, that uh, ideology, which was then engraved or uh, implanted, or uh, how can I put this, uh, deposited into them. And then they carried it on to the next generation, to the next generation, and then up, up until we were born. Yeah. Um like I, like I said, my brother, that sounds familiar. That sounds very familiar because it is what exactly what happened with the African child. Mm. Right? Yeah. Where the Europeans came in, the they took us from us. identity, brought us to another identity. <laughs> <just> <laughs> yeah. so, divided amongst our family, our friends. They yeah. gave us a savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> the white, the white one. And then, 
you know, they give us a system which they had already created. Yeah. So, uh, to what you're actually saying is that we are living under the system that was not originally purposed for us, which is this system is meant to enslave us and keep us under this uh, uh, pressure or, or enslavement with a brain which has been washed and replaced with uh, whatever a, 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 a yes a, a Eurocentric uh, ideology which we are now being uh, remote controlled by the Europeans. Yeah, correct. Right. Let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How strongly do you feel about that? Is it uh, is it an opinion? Or are you are you for sure this is how things are? That we are not just after because we after people. I am very sure about that. Okay. This effed up system began a long time ago, my brother. Yeah. So much to see, my brother. There was once there was. One particular moment in time, mm. around when slavery was, you know, being abolished, one guy said, stated and said, we don't need to, you know, kill them on palms, you know, and whip them and chain them and so forth, right? Because, yeah. you know, the slavery is penetrated deep into their minds. And that's why I always go back to Bob Marley, you yeah. know. We need to liberate ourselves from that mental slavery because that's the only point in time where we can be free. Mm. You know, only time. So you think that the, the, we, yeah, go ahead. Embrace the system. We still believe in the system. We are free of the plantation. We are not whipped. We know we can do what we want, quote unquote. But we still follow the principles. We understand of the ideology, our government, our banking system, everything. You know, and as somebody also said, you know, when people give you a name and give you identity. Mm. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, man. So anyways, man, I want us to go on a lighter note because it just got really intense very quickly. But now, let, let me get this, uh, let, you know, but so what would you say is a, a solution at this point in time? What is a solution for an African child right now? I you guess, I guess you're going to go back to Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to be honest with you, it's going to take a lot yeah. um, to go back to where we were because it is over 500 years of brainwashing mm. and you can't undo that overnight. Mm. But, you know, what we can do to put in the process in motion, yes, you know, sir. we now need to find, you know, our culture before 100%. the last vestiges of those are completely wiped out because but, our grandparents let, let the libraries that are still mm, there with the books and the information mm, you know we need to access this and document it and pass it down because mm, if we don't we won't even know where to begin mm, I, I believe that uh, African people now are being woke uh, and uh, everybody's being enlightened, everybody's seeking some sort of uh, uh, mental freedom, mental emancipation. They, everybody wants to be, you know, they want to know who themselves, who they are, as much as there's still a huge number of people who still believe uh, in a Eurocentric system or whatever the case is. But uh, I, I'm not going to share any of my personal views about the, the subject, but I, I believe that, uh, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, people are being uh, more... Opened, are being more enlightened. Uh, enlightened. And they, yeah, and they, they, they are finding the information they're going because the information is out there. As to what happens from after getting the information, it's a, it's a different story. I'm trying, I'm really trying to move away from the subject, but I keep on getting the following question Do you believe in a global village? Yes, we are in a global village. We are in a global village. Mm. You know, but then if we're in a global village, why are we so divided? That's, 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 you know, you can be, you can be in the system of a global village and still need to be divided amongst yourself. Mm. You know, you can be in a house with people and there still could be division. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true, bro. That's so, so true. Anyways, man, on a lighter note, man, 
on a lighter note, who's your partner? <laughs> I'm still looking for my partner. I'm still looking for my partner. I haven't okay. found that person yet. All right then. Remembered. How I want to be remembered? Um, I want to be remembered as somebody who had a love for humanity. Ah, uh, please say that again. I want to be remembered as somebody who had a love for humanity. Ah, uh, someone who had love for humanity. No, man, that's so great. That's so awesome, man. Thank you so very much, man, for coming through. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Do you want us to play a game? <laughs> what game is that? One must go. Okay. All right. Run. Okay. Ginger okay. and Mary G, one must go. Mary G! <laughs> <laughs> so Mary G must go. Why? Because she must go. Oh, Why she... she must go? Okay. She's affecting my business. Okay. This is not good for your business. <laughs> okay. It's not for my business. All right. Rocco and Gary, one must go. One must go, Rocco, Gary. Mm, Rocco can go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why should Rocco go? <laughs> yeah, Rocco go. Yeah, why? Is there a reason why? Why? Because hey, I'm just saying, you know what? Between the two, I think I can get my business. I can get some business than I can get that on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'll do one last one. Should I do one last one? I read it. All right. Uh, All right, to and promise. One must go. One must go. What's promise? Okay. I go. I'll go with what's promising. Okay, promise must go. Promise will stay. Always will go, my brother. Okay then. <laughs> okay then. All right. <laughs> Anyways, brother, thank you so very much, man, for joining me here live uh, on, um, yeah, what's the show called, bro? Open up and tell it all. Yeah, open up and tell it all. Thank you so very much, bro, for joining me on Open Up and Tell It All. And uh, I don't know maybe whether we'll have a part two next time or in the next coming episode, but thank you so very much for your time. And thank you for telling it all. Leon Chairman, give it up for Dexter Shabalala. Dex, uh, who's the Jazzy Smith? <laughs> brother. Yeah. yeah, before you go, tell everybody how you got Dexter Shabalala. I got Dexter Shabalala from the drama series. I never saw it coming. Where? On Zollywood Cinema. I'm an actor, guys. I'm an actor. All right. Okay. Anyways, yeah, we'll talk about that. I guess on a part two. So you are part of a series called "I Never Saw It Coming," and you're playing the role Dexter Shabalala. Correct, right? Yeah. On the part two, that's where we're starting. We're gonna start talking about the uh, that that very thing that uh, the the yeah, acting and all I'm that. Not, yeah. In a part, we'll be talking about Dexter Shabalala, not Jazzy Smith. Yeah, we we'll talk about Dexter Shabalala, not Jazzy Smith. Anyway, thank you so much, Mr. Jesse Smith. Thank you so very much, brother. It's been an honor having this chat this time with you and everything that you have actually shared. I know you've got so much to actually share, but because of time, let's just hold it here and let's do this again next time. So, like I say this on this very show, open up and tell it all. Three, two, one, kaboom!